What is the difference between a cult and a religion? Yeah, a cult is typically a, a subset of a given religion. So uh, any any mainline religion around the world will tend to have cults or offshoots, and typically it's people who don't like the way that they're doing it, and so mm-hmm. we're going to go off and do this. Now, just because you break off from a group doesn't make you a cult, but a lot of times uh, cults are typified by having a different set of beliefs. Uh, they often will have a, 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 a different book or books that supersede the Bible or that they're almost as important as the Bible or that they, mm-hmm. they'll they say, well, the Bible's important, but they don't really read the Bible. They read all these other books or literature or, yeah. or, or stuff, or they'll have their own translation of a yeah. Bible. Or they say, like, the Bible's been corrupted and, right. and ours is the right. better. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Or that they have a anointed leader mm-hmm. who has a revelation, a better revelation of what's going on in the world today than all the other people that are going on, and they will call themselves apostles or prophets or I don't know whatever other phrase they might come out mm-hmm. with to anoint themselves. A lot of times they are very secretive, or that they possess a special knowledge of that others do not know and so if you want to get the special knowledge or get the special anointing or get the special whatever the special sauce yeah. you need to, you need to come to to our group you yeah. know be a part and then uh there's usually some initiation rites that are involved in things and so there's some very interesting offshoots that have become very uh, mainstream in in America, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Mormons call themselves Christians, but they don't believe the biblical doctrine of what the Bible says. They mm-hmm. they believe in multiple gods, not in God alone. Uh, they have special books, mm-hmm. you know. They have uh, apostles as leaders, and so those are those are names. Uh, You've got uh, the Masonic Lodge, and even though it's a not a quote unquote religion, if you follow the the rituals of what they have, real similar to other religious groups. So, uh, and again, uh, secretive and special, and 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 there and the thing is, is that there have been cults from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. All, you know, from the from the, yeah, the Gnostics. That started out by the time you know by the middle of the second century, and then you had the Marcionites, and then uh, there were a number of other groups that were around. Uh, Arianism was an issue where they didn't believe that Jesus was fully man, fully God, and and that was you know again Council of Nicaea was the reason that that stuff happened. So from the very beginning, they there were different groups and, that mm-hmm. had different beliefs, and and they had to be confronted mm-hmm. and dealt with. And yet people would still, you know... Go off in that direction. Go off and, in that yeah. direction. You couldn't tell them. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was, it's sad. And it still exists today. So that's... And that one of the things about um, with cultish behavior is that is there accountability? Mm. Can someone come in and say, yeah, you're wrong? Mm-hmm. Or that's not biblical? Or that's not right? You know, how, how dare you speak to God's anointed... Mm-hmm. I, I just saw something the other day of a mega church pastor <laughs> saying that you know you should never you ne- should never accuse God's anointed as not being biblical because you're speaking against the anointed one of God. It's like no, the scripture doesn't say that. Yeah, the Bible tells us that we should be accountable. You know, Paul confronted Peter in Galatians two, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know it was challenging. Jesus. Uh, you know, had to take the apostles down a few times when they were th- feeling pretty full of themselves. So I, you know, we we, we all need that, mm-hmm. and uh, no one likes to be held accountable. But it's it's healthy for a church and for a congregation. So, I, you know, you got to be look. And and the other thing though is that we kind of throw the term cult out real easily at people. Oh, yeah. It's an accusation. You know, just mm-hmm. grab some mud and just sling it at somebody. Well, like I think of like. You know the Monsters Inc. sequel, the the college and stuff, and there were like okay. they have the they have the uh, 
the group and they wear the capes and they got the like the slapping boards and there's an initiation. <laughs> okay. Oh, frat, that, that's what I when I frat think of behavior. Cult, when frat I think, behavior. Yeah, okay. yeah. When I think of cult, I think of like you know robes and it's this negative like satanic sort of thing, and that's what comes to my mind. But yeah, yeah. Well, that was a little random, but <laughs> no, yeah. Well, it's an interesting perspective. That's it. Certainly is. Uh, you know, but any any group that's unto itself, and that you have to. You have to go through an initiation Mm -hmm. to belong. Kind of is cultish, you know. We we here, you know, for if you want to be part of our church membership, what's what's the membership? Well, you have to have faith in Christ, Mm -hmm. you know, and you have to just be around and be a part. You don't have to go through some secret initiation. There's no special handshake. There's, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's nothing, nothing weird. Maybe we could do a handshake. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know. You think of one. We'll see what we can do. It has to be easy to remember, uh, though. So yeah, yeah. It's 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 interesting. But you know, it, it being a accusing people of being a cult, mm-hmm. we tend to throw that when we don't have anything else to say, mm-hmm. and we don't. And people are starting to chip away at our position and so we just well you're a cult you know you're this or that yeah and i think we just need to be careful about that but you know if if, if people are um listening to someone and that they are that they that their opinion supersedes what the bible says then that's scary that's a scary place to be whether they're a cult leader or a politician or whoever they might be mm-hmm I think, and, and as a pastor, I want to be held accountable by my people, you know, because they know me and they've listened to me and mm-hmm. they, they're they picking up more than just this uh, clip that, that we share on, on video, but uh, there there should be accountability. Mm-hmm. And not and the, the people holding me accountable should not just be my inner circle of people who can only speak to me. It should mm-hmm. be by, by anyone, right? My sister's quotes, right? <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense for everybody except anyone your watching. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. So we, they're out there, and we have to be careful, and that we um, are ever vigilant. You know, it's interesting too that Jesus warns that there will be wolves in sheep's clothing, mm-hmm. and that implies that the danger lies from within. That, that there can be people masquerading as Christians who can come in and deceive people. And and there's many warnings. You look in the epistles, mm-hmm. there are many warnings about being careful, especially the later epistles, about uh, people coming into congregations and and fooling people and, and leading them astray. So, like I said, from the very get-go, you know, Christians had to be on guard about that doesn't have to be a formalized group. Mm-hmm. It can just be a little small group that's, we're meeting over here. <laughs> no, really. You know, we're meeting in our home, and you mm-hmm. come and be a part. And You know, I've seen some really weird stuff as a pastor for the years that I've been a pastor, and, <laughs> and I've never seen it end positively. Mm. It's always been hurtful because, you know, someone's manipulating people. And God doesn't manipulate us. So So if someone invites you to come join them for church in their shed out back, it's <laughs> be, a, be a little cautious. <laughs> well, uh, if you're part of the underground church in China, then that, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But if you're in America. <laughs> if you're in America, and... Uh, I'll show up if you got coffee and donuts. But, yeah, right. <laughs> but only for the coffee and donuts. Yeah, I just, I just think, think you've got to be careful about... God doesn't God doesn't deal in 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 secret for the most part. Mm-hmm. You know, he's we are meant to live our lives out in front of people and mm-hmm. you're you're too young to know this. You didn't ever live this, but when I was growing up, communism was a real thing. Mm-hmm. And we we heard often stories of people living in communist countries who were 
in the underground church, you know, and they had to be very secretive mm -hmm. about gathering together because they would be arrested by the KGB or others like, you know, other communist groups like the KJB, KGB, um, and uh, thrown in prison, tortured for their faith. Mm -hmm. And that was a real thing. And, and, you know, they would do their baptisms out in the middle of the night and freezing freezing lakes and, and <laughs> places because their faith was so real and mm -hmm. you know you just you think about that that you know so that's 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 different mm -hmm. than what we're talking about so yeah we're blessed here in america we are blessed we are blessed